I'm here with Tony Archer to talk about officiating from round 21. Uh, Tony, let's start with one of the hot topics from the weekend was obstruction and there were three incidences to talk about. Can we go through those? Yeah, we certainly can. Obviously, uh, the first one's out of the Warriors uh, Penrith game. There's contact made by um, Thompson on the outside shoulder of Cleary. That con uh, contact is minimal. Uh, Thompson continues through the line. Um, Cleary is able to continue to defend and they score two wide in the corner. Um, confirm the live decision, which was the correct one. Uh, the second incident here you can see uh, involves contact made on Sean Johnson. Uh, you can see that a decision is made by Sean Johnson to come in and defend when he pushes off his uh, right leg. Um, he commits to the tackle. They score wide. Uh, that's a try as well um, due to the fact that uh, Johnson made a defensive decision. Okay, and there was one out of the Titans-Sharks match. Yeah, there certainly was. Um, obviously, the try from Anthony Don was a live decision of try. Uh, you can see that there's two aspects to this. Uh, the contact from McQueen, he comes forward, he stops just short of the line, but there is contact on Maloney. Um, the debate around where Mead catches the ball, uh, the bunker had insufficient evidence to overturn it. You can see from the three angles that are provided, uh, the, uh, the angle shows that the ball has to be caught beyond the inside shoulder. There's evidence to suggest that. There's evidence that shows that it's caught short. So when they have that confliction uh, around the vision, uh, they uh, go with the live decision, which was try. So in those circumstances, it's insufficient to, uh, to overturn the decision. The ball's grounded correctly. It's a try. Okay, and early in that match, um, David Mead was sin binned. Uh, have you had a chance to look at that? And are you confident that David Mead was the right guy to be spending 10 minutes in the bin? Yeah, I am. Uh, there's two aspects of this. The ball's passed backwards. The ball's on the ground loose. Um, Michael Innes comes forward to kick the ball. At that stage, uh, Parsi goes down to his knees and uh, attempts to either get the ball or or, or tackle uh, Innes, but because of the fact that the ball is loose at that stage, uh, the involvement of Parsi is, is to be penalised but not sin bin because of that. But David Mead then enters the tackle as well and prevents um, Innes from getting into the in goal. Um, Innes doesn't have the ball at that stage and we've been consistent on th this year. Uh, that's a penalty and that's a sin bin. So the right man was sin bin uh, and correct to give the penalty. And just lastly, there were two matches that went into Golden Point across the weekend, um, but some questions have been raised around how referees officiate in that time. Can you just clarify? Yeah, I can. Uh, obviously, it's a difficult period um, to referee in, uh, but if there's clear breaches of the rules, uh, my expectation is that the referees penalise in those circumstances. You can see an example here from Saturday night where the Penrith markers are split uh, and they're involved in the play. In those circumstances, I expect the penalty to be awarded. Um, we've done that earlier in the year and, as I said, if there's those clear breaches, I expect action to be taken by the referees. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, Tony. No problems.